suppose i ask you will you prefer 100 today or 100 after one year what will you say you will say it's a simple math 100 today is a much better option than getting 100 after one year why because if I give you 100 rupees today and supposedly you put it in a bank and let's say that the interest rate that you earn is 10% per annum. So from this 10% per annum, you will be earning 100 into 10 by 100, which will be 10. So which means that you will have this 100 plus the 10 rupees interest that you earn, which will be 110. So, 100 rupees today would actually mean 110 rupees after one year. As against this 100 that you are getting after one year. So, definitely, definitely you are better off by taking 100 today. So, please understand that in this case, what did I do? I basically went ahead and I found out the future value of this 100 rupees. And the future value of this 100 rupees is 110. And when I compare this with what I'm getting after one year, it's clear that I want this. So whenever you have to write any equation or you have to go ahead and you know you have to compare two values they have to be in the same period in the same zone so i cannot just directly compare 100 today with 100 and uh, you know with 100 tomorrow or 100 after one year I can compare 110 after one year with 100 after one year. So I have to bring today's value in the future period. That's called future value. There is another thing that you could have done. Let's say that I again want to compare 100 today versus 100 after one year. I could have brought this 100 after one year in today's value. How? When I was taking this 100 today in the future value, I was saying I will get this 100 after one year and I will earn some interest rate on this 100 where my interest rate that I took was 10%. So which means that I would be getting 100 one plus R after one year. So I was comparing this 100 after one year with 100 into one plus R after one year. So which means whenever I have an amount, may any amount, maybe P, if I have to find the future value of this P, I will multiply this P with one plus R. And this will be the future value of P. Just the opposite of this is present value. So if I have to go ahead and now I have to find the present value of this 100 today, I will say, let me divide this by 1 plus R. <clears throat> Suppose I know that in this case, the interest rate is 10%. So this would be 100 upon 1 plus 10% is 10 by 100. 
which is 100 upon 1.1, right? And now if I go ahead and I solve this, I'm going to go ahead and get 100 divided by 1.1, which is 90.9090. So we can approximate it to 90.91. So what I have done, I have brought this 100 after one year to its present value. And 100 after one year means that you're just getting 90 today. As compared to this, where you're getting 100 today. So when I compare the present value, 100 today versus 90 today, definitely this is a better option. So present value means whatever stream of payments you are going to get in the future, you are finding its value today. What is the amount today which when invested at the rate R percent will give you the future value? So when 90.91 is invested at the rate of 10%, it will give you 100 in the future, right? This is what present value is. Now, had it been 100 after two years, then how would you find the present value? So the general formula of finding the present value is future value divided by 1 plus r to the power n where n is the number of years after which you're getting that money. So if I tell you that I'm getting 100 after two years and I ask you what its present value is going to be, you will simply say that present value will be 100 upon 1 plus r to the power 2. And if I tell you that the interest rate is 10%, then the present value will be 100 upon 1.1 to the power of 2, right? Now, supposedly, I give you one more part to it. So, will you prefer 100 today or 110 after one year? The answer is you will be indifferent. Why? Because 110 after one year, has its present value as 100 divided by 1 plus 0.1. Interest rate was 10%. So 110 divided by 1.1, which is exactly 100 today. So the present value of 110 after one year is the same as this. Therefore, you will be indifferent. Right? So basically, present value is when you have the stream of payments in the future and you bring it to the present. Future value is when you have a payment today and you try and find what will be its value in the future. Here I could have found the future value also. I could have done 100 today means 100 plus 10% on 100 which is 100 plus 10, which is 110 after one year. So this is its future value, which is the same as what I'm getting in the other, you know, payment, which is 110 after one year. So you can follow any concept. In intertemporal choice, different books follow different technique, but they lead to the same solution as you can see from here. Either I can bring all the stream of payments in the future value. So I can find its value after one year and compare it with this. Or I can find everything in the present value. But you have to be consistent. You just have to follow one technique. You cannot follow both. Okay. Now, let's see what is happening. I have two periods. Period one and period two. Let's say... That in period one, the consumption is C1 and income is M1. In period two, consumption is C2 and income is M2. Now, please understand. 
this is happening in period two, right? So if I have to write the budget equation, I will have to bring this in the present value terms. Either this or I will have to bring this in the future value terms, right? Either of this, right? So either you will have to bring the present value, uh, I mean, either you will have to bring period two's value in the present value term, or you will have to bring the period one value in the future value terms, so that both of them are comparable. So if I go ahead and follow the present value term, it would mean that C2's present value will be C2 upon one plus R, this is, if I'm consuming C2 after one year, then its present value is C2 upon 1 plus R. And M2's present value is going to be M2 upon 1 plus R. So my total consumption of two periods is this plus this. And my total income of the two period is this plus this. In order to add the total consumption or add the total income, make sure that you bring them in the same period. So, you know, this has been brought to the same period, period one value. So now see here. Let's just look here. I'm not taking prices into account for now. So I'm just saying that my total consumption of the two periods can only take place from my total income. I cannot exceed my income, right? I may consume more than my income in period one, in which case I will have to repay that in period two. I may want to consume less than my income in period one, in which case I will have more in period two. But the total consumption in the two periods together, together has to be equal to the total income. Consumption in period one is C1. Income in period one is M1. Consumption in period two is C2. But I can add two things together only when they are in the same period, same zone. So I bring the consumption in period two in its present value form. So I'm saying C2 divided by one plus R equal to m1 plus m2 divided by 1 plus r. I have brought this in its present value form also. Now this is entirely in its present value form and this is also in its present value form. Now let's just focus this a bit more. What will happen? If I actually write the same equation, but in terms of future value. So suppose I tell you that I understand total consumption has to be equal to total income. What is total consumption? C1 in period 1 and C2 in period 2. But now I want to write everything in terms of future value. So this is already value in period 2. And to bring this to period two, I will multiply this with one plus R. Then this becomes a future value of this. And I add this together. And this is equal to income in period one. But I have to bring this in terms of period two. So I multiply it with one plus R plus income in period two. This is also a form that I can write. But here everything is in its future value. Now notice that if I just solve this a bit, this equation, how can I solve it? I can multiply this with R1 plus R plus C1, C2 upon 1 plus R is equal to M1. I'm just taking denominator common, right? Upon 1 plus R and this gets cancelled. So I will get C1 into 1 plus R plus C2 
equal to m1 into 1 plus r plus m2. But isn't this the entire equation in terms of future value? So actually speaking, the budget line in terms of the present value, this budget line is synonymous to the budget line in terms of future value. This is my budget line when written in terms of present value. I just manipulated it a bit. I just wrote it in a different way and I got my budget line in terms of future value. So both of them are synonymous to each other. They are the same. I mean, they're different sides of the same coin. They are doing the same thing here. Now, let's go back and check. So, you know, let's define future value now. What is future value? If R is equal to 0 0.1, then 100 saved at the start of period 1 becomes 110 at the start of period 2. So you have 100 rupees and you earn an interest rate of 10% on this 100 rupees. So this is 100 plus 10. You have 110 after one year. So what is future value? The value next period of one, $1 saved now is the future value of that dollar. So you had $1 with you. You saved that $1 for the future. Then its value in the future is called future value of that $1. Its value in the future is called future value. 